hi, everybody. I wanted to come on and talk a little bit about the early results that we're seeing in 2024. Now, of course, this admission cycle is not over. There's lots more decisions to come out. But I think we do have enough data to start noticing a few trends that have are happening. So I thought it would be interesting to chat just a little bit about those. I think the first trend is one that we've really seen since 2019. So if we go from the 2019 to 2020 admission cycle until now, what we've seen is a 41% increase in common app applications. That's a large, large increase. And this year was a 12% increase that we saw this year. So it continues to have a healthy increase every year. I think grounding oneself in this data is so important because the increase in applications is a factor of a number of things, test optional being one of them. The fact that you don't have to have a test score to apply to many colleges in the country has vastly increased the number of applications. I also think we're in a little bit of a like, the number of applications have gone up, therefore the number of students are adding more applications. So it's just sort of building on itself and it doesn't seem to yet have a stopping point. So what does that mean? That means that it becomes a lot less predictable to know who's gonna get in where when the applicant pool continues to grow. And so that's one of the trends that we're seeing is our applicant pool at colleges continues to grow and therefore increases the competitiveness at many of these schools. So we see the admissions rates declining significantly from where they were in the 2019, 2020 till now. And we're seeing this kind of across the board at private schools, at a little more mid-range schools, at the big, you know, the publics that are especially popular. So we're seeing that in many places. The second trend we're seeing is an increase on grades and rigor. So this is really a function, again, something that's been building over these years, which is if we don't have a test score in there, then the only way for the college to evaluate if this student is a good match academically is to really look at grades and rigor. And so I think one of the things that we have noticed is some of the like SEC schools, the Southern schools especially have been putting a very high value on rigor, AP courses, IB courses, and that has been a very big part of their admissions. Of course, some of those schools also are not test optional. So they're looking at that whole thing. And those schools have all become more competitive. You know, if you look at like a Tennessee, which was for an out-of-state student used to be in the 60 some 60 something percent acceptance rate, we're down into low 30s, maybe 20s by the, the this year. So we're seeing massive drops in some schools like that. And the thing they seem to be honing in on a lot is that grades and rigor piece. Of course, we're still seeing really large wait lists with, you know, obviously way more students on a wait list than could obviously get off. So, um, you know, one can dig into the common data set and see how many students get off. Now, certainly we had we had a lot of kids that got off wait lists last year. So there is that possibility to get off the wait list, but the wait list just continue to grow and get bigger and bigger. And so I think a wait list is an opportunity for a student first and foremost to look at the colleges they are accepted in and get to know them and find one that they are excited about, okay? That's the first thing. You want to do that before you then start pursuing wait lists. You, sh you certainly should, if there's a school on a wait list, you should pursue it if you're still interested. But first, make sure that you are taking the colleges you're actually accepted at and, and engaging with them so that you can determine which of those schools will be the best match for you, even if it wasn't the first school that you were hoping to get into. One other thing we're seeing is, and I kind of alluded to this in the grades and rigor piece, is a real increase in the competitiveness in some of the public colleges. So colleges that sometimes people are like, oh yeah, that's not hard to get into, have really become significantly harder to get into. And um, so that 
we're seeing an increase in applications to public colleges and we're seeing the admit rates go down, especially for students who are out of state, which a lot of our students may be wanting to go to other states and pursue their education. And that has become much more difficult. And as I said, we're definitely seeing that with the Southern colleges in a pretty large shift from where those schools were to where many of them are are now and where they seem to be headed, if you will. The last thing that we're continuing to see, and I left it to last because I think it is so important, your grades and your test scores, your recommendations and your essays are all really, really, really important. But one of the things that students who shine in college admissions have in common is that they have pursued engagement activities at a level where they actually have a story to tell about it. There's actually enough in there that it's not just, oh, I participate in this club, but there's an arc. There's a story in what they've done and how they've engaged. And this does not need to be cookie cutter. You do not need to be president of the student body. It could be actually something really interesting, but it fits together over years. And when I look at the applicants from the early pool, the ones that just seem to be getting yes, 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 yes. Yes, they had good grades and yes, they had good test scores, but there's a lot of kids that have good grades and test scores or, and some of them didn't have test scores. But the unifying thing I see is there is a story in there. There is actually something they cared enough to do over time and it can be read in an application. If I look at the application, I can see that this student cares about this, they care about this, and they care about this. So this takes planning. This means doing work well before one is applying to get those things in place. Because in the beginning, freshman and sophomore years, students have to explore, they don't know. And I would say, especially in majors that are pre-professional, computer science, engineering, business, nursing, you have got to have to be competitive at competitive schools, things that show that interest. Now, cherry on top, if you can have those things show multiple things. So let's say that you actually, you know, are interested in computer science, but you apply it in a place you go help a nonprofit that you genuinely care about. So if you can combine interests, even better. But I see that activity piece and engagement piece becoming. So when I say activity and engagement, I'm talking about things in school, out of school, in the summer, service, all those things together. And what we're looking for is not to chalk up tons of things. This is where I think people miss the boat. We're looking for things that are deep enough and rich enough that you're ultimately, when you get to that college application, going to be able to tell a story. So these are a few of the things that we're seeing in this season. I can't wait for the rest of it to unfold. And I'm sure there's going to be some other things that become very obvious. But these are some of the early trends we're seeing. And I want to wish all of you good luck in this college journey. Thank you.